Welcome to Behind the Bars TV. In this episode, I'm going to be telling you about a prisoner serving IPP. Now, this prisoner is named Wayne Gregory, and he has sent me a letter from inside of HMP Golf. Now, the reason why he sent me a letter is because from the IPP pages, when I've been talking about IPPs, a family friend has been in touch telling me about the case of Wayne Gregory. Now, I'm going to be reading the letter to you just so you can get the full story. And the reason why I'm doing this is to let people know what is actually happening with the IPPs. Now, for anybody who hasn't been following my channel or anybody that doesn't know about the IPPs, I'll give you a brief description of an IPP before I move on to the story. So an IPP stands for Indefinite Sentence for Public Protection, and it means exactly that. It's indefinite, it's a 99-year sentence, and you can be held in prison for the rest of your life if you don't show that you're no longer a danger and the parole board see fit to release you. Now, some people like Wayne, who's been given a relatively short tariff and have been in prison for 18 years, and sometimes it's no fault of their own. And when I say no fault of their own, I mean it's down to mental health problems. They're no longer a danger to the public, but they're a danger to themselves. And that is the reason why they're being kept in prison. But the IPP is what has made them suffer with mental health but they're then using this as an excuse to keep the individual in prison. <clears throat> now I'm going to start by showing you some pictures of Wayne. And Wayne's name or Wayne's nickname in prison is the Joker. And the reason why he's nicknamed the Joker by his fellow inmates is because when he's become self-harmer and when he's been harming himself, he's actually sliced his face so it looks as though he's smiling and this paints a disturbing picture of why he's actually done that because he's so sad and so unhappy stuck inside of prison the only way he can see himself smiling is by slicing his face from here to here and that is the reason why he's called that so here we go pictures of Wayne in 2007 when he first entered custody then this one says around the time of my tariff I was sentenced sorry around the time of my tariff I was sentenced to was now finished so this is some four years later at the time of his tariff now as you can see at the time of his tariff he looks quite what you would say for prison terms as healthy. And what I mean by that is if you have a look, he's quite muscly. He's got big traps on him here. So he looks as though he's been looking after himself in prison, training hard and eating well. And this picture here is a couple of years after his tariff expired. Now look at the difference. Time of his tariff. Two years later, when he's still not been released, and I'll go on to the story and tell you why he's actually starting to look like this. 2015, first significant wound to the right side of my mouth and cheek. Now look at that picture compared to what he was when he first entered prison. And look at that. If that's not sad, then I don't know what is. 2015-16, second significant wound to the left side of my mouth and cheek. So let's have a comparison. Young, fresh looking, entered the prison system. And that's him now. Me being IPP myself, look at that. I've got goosebumps just looking at that. 
because that sort of thing affects me for me being IPP as well. Got goosebumps all over my arms that sending shivers and tingles all over my body looking at that. Now anybody else who's IPP and has got emotion will feel the same because we know exactly what Wayne is going through. So it's quite a long letter this people. Hopefully you are interested in it and you will watch the full video. I haven't even read the whole lot of this myself because I never had time. So this is my first time. I've read the first few pages, but I'm going to read the whole lot now. So it's HMP Golf and it's dated the 18th of January 2024. Dear Ricky, I am writing this letter to explain my situation on how the IPP has affected every aspect of my life mental and physical health, relationships, and progression out of prison. On the 28th of June, 2007, I was remanded into custody for charges of Section 18, wounding and common assault. I understand how bad this sounds, but it is just the reality of my situation. Later that year, in roughly December, I was sentenced to four years IPP at Swansea Crown Court after I pleaded guilty. In 2008, the Court of Appeal reduced the sentence by a year and also took my remand time off. This meant I now had a tariff of two years and 27 days, so just short of three years, which I would have to serve before I could be released. As it currently stands, I've now served roughly 17 years of this sentence. 15 years over tariff. More times or more years than what a murderer has served. I should mention that my brother was my co-accused on all the charges and received the same sentence as me. Both of us had our first parole in 2011, but both of us were knocked back, mainly due to offence-related coursework still being outstanding. Which means if you're in prison, and you've got on your sentence plan that you need to do a behaviour course or a violence reduction course and you haven't done it in the time before your tariff comes up, then you will get a knockback. But sometimes there's a four year waiting list for these courses or four years to get through the system and get on a course and these tariff is only two and a half or two and a bit years. So how are you supposed to show progression when you can't even get on the course in the time that they've given you to serve? Roughly two years later, we again set before the parole board, but my brother had gained his C-card status just before attending and being moved to HMP Havrick in a progressive move. Due to this, parole board recommended my brother be moved to D-card, open prison, but I was to remain in HMP Golf and complete offence-related courses. By this time, I was suffering with depression and anxiety and found it hard to complete courses due to being moved around groups of people. Also due to my brother moving, feelings of hopelessness began to creep in as my support network had realistically gone. In roughly 2014, I attended 10 sessions of offence related course, but had to withdraw due to severe anxiety. The course was ATS, which is the Enhanced Thinking Skill course. Within roughly six months, the course had changed, so now, I was told to complete the Think and Skills program, <clears throat> which is exactly the same. They just changed the name in prison because the TSP or the ATS, sorry, <clears throat> I think it was proven that it wasn't working. So they changed the name. Even though they knew I would struggle, but I was promised my C cut if I completed it. I completed TSP in 2014 but the goalposts changed and I was told I would now have to complete another course called CALM, which is the controlling and, uh, sorry, controlling anger and reduction course. It was around this period, my brother going and doing these courses that I first self-harmed in prison, but these were all only superficial cuts to my left arm. Around 2015, I reluctantly attended assessment for the CALM course, but was found not fit for the criteria. However, I was deemed to fit the criteria for the resolve course, 
a violence reduction course. I attended Resolve for roughly 10 sessions, but again had to withdraw due to my severe anxiety. It was around this time my prison behaviour started to change. I was self-medicating, drinking prison hooch, and started to receive IEPs, which is warnings and adjudications for bad behaviour. So an IEP is something that gets documented into your, into your file in prison, and obviously they'll read through your file to see what's been happening in your, whilst you've been in prison. So it says, as I had failed to complete resolve, my offender supervisor told me my risk factors had gone up. Due to this, they wanted me to do <clears throat> the SCP, which is the Self Change Programme. But this course was six months long. I explained I had failed to complete short courses due to anxiety. So how was I to complete a six month course? I asked for the chance to complete these courses on a one-to-one -one basis and although they acknowledged this, this was, this was a way forward, I was told they didn't have the resources. Due to this, I spoke to the mental health team and told them I was going to cut my face as I didn't feel as though I was get, ever getting out so no one would see me. My thinking behind this was that because it was my face, it would have an impact and the authorities would see the severe impact this is having on me. In June 2015, I first caused a significant wound to the right side of my mouth and cheek. This would have been due to either a parole board knockback or prison CCAT referral knockback on top of everything else. By now, as you can imagine, my mental health was severely de deteriorating due to the impact of the sentence and I couldn't understand why I couldn't progress where my brother had even, even though I was trying my hardest to complete everything asked of me. This wound was a major cry for help and my offender manager come and seen me and told me I would benefit going to the Westgate unit in HMP Franklin, which is a DSPD, which stands for Dangerous and Severe Personality Disorder Unit. What they failed to understand was this impacted more on my mental health as it was a four to seven year referral. Meaning I would spend four to seven years there even though I was over tariff. I honestly felt at this point that I was in an endless pit of despair and was telling everyone this. So imagine being in prison for all those years over tariff and then being told to go to their Westgate unit and spend another four to seven years when your tariff was only two years. Crazy. Sometime in 2015, the Beacon unit here at HMP Goth was mentioned for me, which is a therapeutic community, and I was told the period spent on there was roughly three years. As this was the better of the two options, Westgate or Beacon unit, I reluctantly agreed to the Beacon. Once more, I failed to complete the group sessions due to my anxiety. My time on the Beacon eventually broke down after roughly 15 months due to my erratic behaviour, getting warnings and adjudications, and my level of self-harm and suicide attempts had skyrocketed. During my time on the Beacon, I once again caused a significant wound to the left side of my mouth and cheek. I was kicked off the sorry, I was kicked off the Beacon Eunuch and placed on the VP wings, vulnerable prisoner wings, due to my levels of self-harm, normal location wings I had wished to move on to had told me I was too much paperwork, mainly due to my self-harming, as every incident had to be recorded. From roughly 2016 to 2020, I basically just existed on the wing with erratic behaviour and constant self-harming, which would result in me getting rushed to hospital for blood transfusions due to the amount of blood lost. I should add that on, my, on most of these occasions, I wrote in blood on my cell walls things like, just in case I die, IPP killed me. 
I also wrote on my body for the morgue to read once dead, IPP has killed me. Please investigate. I wrote this in pen so prison staff wouldn't see. So such was my level of despair at the situation. In 2020, I went before the parole board once more and they granted me DCAT, which is category, which is an open prison. Both probation and my offender supervisor had all pushed for it to give me my chance of release. Some hope and to try sure that there was some light at the end of the tunnel. However, although this was, a, this was great, my level of erratic behaviour and self-harm leading up to the decision had, ne had never been worse. My thought process was, why am I entitled to DCAT now when I've completed no further courses? My behaviour has been terrible and I couldn't understand why it had been granted now and not years ago. My only conclusion was that they, they were scared of another death in custody. My behaviour improved and self-harm levels come down as I finally had some hope. However, over the next 80 months, no prison in England or Wales would accept me in the Cat D due to my level of self-harm and the severity of it. Imagine the despair of that. You've been granted Category D status, but no prison in the country will accept you. Towards the end of this 80-month period, I had numerous wide phone calls, sorry, new, numerous wide calls with HMP, Press, I can't, under, can't say that one probably. With another prison, a day cut that said they had a mental health team who were aware of my self harming and they eventually told me they would accept me. As you can imagine, I was over the moon <clears throat> as my brother had been there and spoke highly of it. The last video call had been really positive with them, saying they would meet me off the bus etc but then within a matter of weeks my offender supervisor told me that HMP press code were refusing to have me but another day cat had now agreed to take me that prison was HMP Learhill in January 2022 I set off for HMP Learhill and was over the moon to be progressing however no one had mentioned that there would be an overnight stay at HMP Bullingdon where they knew nothing of my situation and refused to give me medication, which straight away affected my mental health. Due to this, I punched out my observation panel in my prison cell, once back on the van and halfway to HMP Learhill. I was informed by the woman officer present that I had to be returned to HMP Bullingdon as my hand was injured and HMP Learhill couldn't facilitate any hospital appointment. My heart sank to my feet upon hearing this news and once returned to HMP Bullingdon, I smashed up two cells and self-harmed over a six-day period. I was then returned to HMP Garth. Once back at HMP Garth, my offender supervisor told me that I hadn't done anything at HMP Learhill. The Learhill move was still on, however, I was advised that HMP Learhill had requested I had a three month common period in HMP Golf. At the same time I was informed of this, I also had a parole hearing in four or five weeks, meaning another year would be wasted. I was happy I still had my cut tea, but the sheer frustration of my situation was severely affecting my mental health and behaviour. My offender supervisor then told me that at the next parole hearing they would all go for straight release as I'd already been cut D for 18 months. My parole hearing had been set for September 2022 but then every month it got pushed back another month and this kept going until April 2023. I was then informed it was being moved again until July 2023 which impacted me massively. I climbed upon some netting and done a protest with a ligature around my neck, telling everyone how the IPP and the parole changing dates had affected me. 
Due to this, I met with the OMU Offender Manager Unit Governor, who said, let's send you to HMP Lee Hill to see if we can offer you some hope and progression for you. This was against all reports advice as there was no support, but I honestly think the gov I thank the Governor for trying. In July 2023, I was sent straight to HMP Lee Hill via HMP Goth's own transport, so there was no stopovers. I was overjoyed to arrive anxious, but eager to progress and honestly felt like I'd arrived at Centre Parks. Because my self-harm had become like an addiction when upset, this is what I resorted to. In cut day open conditions, I now had access to razor blades where support by staff was limited. I found HMP Lear Hill to be mainly a sex offender prison where everyone was suspicious of each other. I have never been around ex-offenders before and I was a victim of sex crimes when younger. I found the independence overwhelming and withdrew into myself as I couldn't trust the people around me. I was at HMP Lear Hill roughly seven days before I made a cut to my leg requiring eight stitches. Upon return from hospital to Lear Hill, I was informed by a senior officer that I could not self-harm that serious again. Otherwise, I would be moved to another prison. You have to understand that I seriously felt that I had let myself down by self-harming and decat and began to become depressed and severely withdrawn from any socialising. These feelings led to me self-harming again roughly seven days later where I was sent to hospital but then sent to HMP Bristol. Since this time I've reflected on this and understand I've been given chances other IPPs haven't. I was asked whether I was self-destructing on purpose and also reflected on this point but the truth of the matter is I'm institutionalised and in HMP Goff I'm around people who understand my situation and who are long-term prisoners. I had been around some of these people longer than my own family. My brother has been released six years ago and fitted back into society with no issues and started a family. Whereas I'm covered in scars, frustrated, angry, institutionalised and suffering crippling anxiety of groups of people developed over this sentence. In July 2023, I was sent to HMP Bristol from HMP Learhill. Once again, this was a prison that knew nothing of my history and I was taken off all medication. So I smashed up the cell and damaged, and sorry, and demanded medication whilst self-harming. The mental health team intervened and apologised as I had been kicked out of HMP Learhill for self-harming and not drug abuse, which the doctor had assumed when taking all my medication off me. They then put me back on all medications and I was returned to HMP Goth three days later. Since being back, I've worked with probation and my offender supervisor and the plan now is for me to go to Chatham here, which has a pipe unit, which is a therapeutic community with a clinical team which consists of psychologists, psychiatrists, and occupation therapists, to name but a few. As I sit here now in 2024, the first month of this year, I am honestly anxious over moving, but I look forward to being released and hope to be a voice for IPPs and the effects it has had on people. I know I'm a complex case with many issues that I will overcome to return to society, to some normality with my family and friends, to be free of the IPP over time. After completing the main body of this letter, and whilst preparing the photos ready for postage, I was informed by probation on the 15th of January 2024 that Chatham here may be unwilling to accept me due to any publicity I may generate from this letter or from talking 
out over the IPP. So Wayne has been getting excited in prison, talking to probation, telling them that somebody's going to voice his story, which is me. And he's been getting excited because he wants people to hear his story. He's been forgotten about and he's in there. But because of the fact that he's telling probation, they've told the place that he's meant to be going to and they're not. They're saying they aren't going to accept him. So he goes on to say, I was scared if there was any middle ground. No, sorry. I was asked by probation if there was any middle ground. But after nearly 17 years, I've been quiet enough. So, <clears throat> sorry, I can't understand that little bit there. It says there, 17 years, I've been quiet enough. So I want my experience of the IPP out there for others to know what this sentence has done to me. I was further told I had lost my Cat D status and was now Category B again. On top of this, I was told a few days ago that my parole hearing had been pushed back for, th for three reports to be done on me, which could take months. Usually I wouldn't be able to handle this situation, but this time I feel things are changing around the IPP and I've something to aim for. I won't be a silent voice of the IPP and hope this letter highlights the ongoing issues we face. Thank you for taking the time to read this letter and I apologise it's so long. I really didn't realise when asked how the IPP sentence had affected me that it would be so complex to write so I appreciate your consideration of the situation. He goes on to say if you have any questions or queries please do not hesitate to contact me. So I will put Wayne's, I'll just put that up there now. If you want to pause the video and write that down, I'm sure Wayne would love to hear from people and get some support. So he says, please do not hesitate to contact me. And he's put on PS, I have included some photos which I've already went through. But anybody who has got any sort of emotion cannot tell me that that letter isn't damaging and isn't affecting you. But I will, will go on to say when it says there, when he says they put him on the VP wing, he wasn't put on the VP wing with the sex offenders. He was put on there with people who are self-harmers, um, which he obviously went on to say. And that's the reason when he was in HMP Learhill, he couldn't be around them type of people because something had happened to him when he's younger. But 17 years of going through hell when he could have been released in just over two years. And like I mentioned earlier on, there's people committed murders and getting out in less time than what Wayne has served in there. But that is a very touching and moving letter. And again, I'm just going to put these up just to show the comparison from a young man to that. And the reason why the photocopied is because obviously he's in prison and he couldn't send the originals out or the prison the prison doesn't send the originals out so he had to get them photocopied. But yes, he done wrong. Yes, he deserved prison. Did he deserve to be spent 17 years in prison? Absolutely not. And like Wayne went on to mention there, he wants to be a voice for the IPPs. Exactly the same as what I'm doing out here. I'm highlighting the issues with the IPPs. I'm letting people know what's going on with these sentences. And it is an ongoing nightmare, even out here. Wayne doesn't realise when he gets out and he's released on licence, how hard it's going to be out here for him as well. Even though you get released from prison when you're out here serving IPP in the community, the IPP doesn't end. The IPP won't end until the day it is terminated for everybody. But um, yes, that was a little bit different, people, to the videos I normally do, especially the videos on the IPPs. I hope you're still watching at this point and you did listen to Wayne's story. And like he mentioned, even if you don't want to get in touch with Wayne, if you put it in the comments, and I will let him know through the through the 
the third person, the family member, or the, sorry, not the family member, a friend of the family. Let us know, or put it in the comments. I'll send the information back, and we'll let Wayne know that he hasn't been forgotten about, because the IPPs are the forgotten, the forgotten ones. And he doesn't have much contact with his family no more. He doesn't speak to his brother. Hopefully his brother watches this and sees what's going on. Because I don't even think his brother knows the severity of it. And I can imagine his brother and his family members will be quite upset when they see that picture of his face cut up like that. Because it is a, a tragedy and a horrendous story. But when he admits he done wrong, he admits his guilt. He knows he caused stress to the victims but Wayne just wants to get out and get on with his life but he's going to be forever reminded of this with all the scars all over his body because of the IPP now a lot of people could be saying it's not because of the IPP it's because of his own actions but these IPPs were deemed inhumane in 2012 and they were abolished if you abolish a sentence and say it's inhumane, that should then be abolished retrospectively across the board. The, even the European Courts of Human Rights are getting involved with this sentence. This sentence has more than damaged people. 80, 88 people or 89 have committed suicide in prison because they could no longer hack this sentence. This sentence that was abolished that's not to mention the ones out here in the ones that have been released out into the community. There's ones out here who could no longer hack the sentence out here in fear of recall. That's how damaging it is. They, they were in fear of recall back to prison. So they committed suicide just so they didn't have to serve this sentence. So what does that tell you? But again, people, hopefully you enjoyed that content. And I will be doing more on the IPPs. And if there's anyone still watching on the IPP channels who's got a story that wants to come on and share it, hit us up, drop us in the comments or drop us an email. Come on and talk about the IPP. Share your experiences. The more people hear about it, the more it's in the public limelight, the more something will be done about it. Hope everyone enjoyed that. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching.